Hi students, today as a part of uh, the preparation of uh, nanomaterials, I am going to explain you about the uh, chemical vapor deposition method. And this chemical vapor deposition method is most popularly called as uh, CVD process for the preparation of nanomaterials. So in fact, I am going to explain you about the uh, chemical vapor deposition method for the preparation of carbon nanotubes. Right. So first and foremost we have to discuss why this particular method is called as a chemical vapor deposition method. This particular method is so called as chemical vapor deposition method because during this method the chemical reactions takes place between the substrate molecules either precursor molecules on the surface of the substrate. Now what is the substrate and the precursor I will discuss later. But do remember that this particular method is called as a chemical vapor deposition method because this particular method involves a chemical reaction between the substrate molecules and the precursor molecules on the surface of the substrate. Now this particular chemical vapor deposition method which is used for uh, uh, the preparation of carbon nanotubes or any of the chemical vapor deposition method mainly consists of uh, the four uh, substances. The four substances. The first substance is substrate. Now let us discuss what is a substrate. The substrate is the one on whose surface the reaction, that is, on whose surface the change occurs. The substrate is the one on whose surface the change occurs. And the examples of the substrate uh, for the preparation of carbon nanotubes making use of chemical vapor deposition method is powder activated carbon, which is, pop which is uh, popularly called as PAC, powder activated carbon. And the next uh, substance which is very important uh, for the CVD method for the preparation of uh, carbon nanotubes is the catalyst. And what for the catalyst is being used I will discuss later. But the catalyst and the examples of the catalyst are nickel can be used and as cobalt can be used, iron or combination of this can be used, even molybdenum can also be used. Now the third substance which is important uh, for uh, the CVD process in, in order to synthesize the carbon nanotubes is uh, precursor gas or carbon containing gas and uh, examples of the precursor gas or carbon containing gas includes acetylene, ethylene, ethanol or methane. And the next substance which is required for the synthesis of carbon nanotubes so making use of CVD method is uh, the carrier gas or forced gas. Carrier gas or forced gas. And the example of uh, carrier gas or forced gas is uh, uh, the ammonia we can consider nitrogen or hydrogen we can consider. Now do remember that these four substances are very important. Uh, for uh, the preparation of carbon nanotubes making use of uh, chemical vapor deposition method. First one is substrate. And what is the substrate? The substrate, the substrate is a substance on whose surface the change is occurs. Right. On whose surface the change occurs. And here it is PAC. And uh, in order to facilitate in order to facilitate the faster reaction between the precursor gas molecules and the substrate molecules, we have to impregnate, we have to impregnate the catalyst molecules into the substrate. Now what are the examples of the catalyst already I have explained. So what the catalyst is doing? It is enhancing the surface reaction between the precursor molecules and the substrate molecules on the surface of the substrate. Now let us discuss about what is the importance of this precursor gas or carbon containing gas. Now what is the precursor? Already I have explained you that the precursor is a substance which do undergo change. And here as a precursor we have to use the carbon containing gas. 
because we are going to prepare the carbon nanotubes the name itself suggests that uh, these tubes contains the carbon as the major component so for uh, preparing the carbon nanotubes definitely our starting material or precursor gas should be a carbon containing gas and uh, what is the class of organic molecule which is rich in carbon content the class of organic molecules which are rich in uh, carbon contents are alkanes alkenes and alkynes right so accordingly we can use um, either acetylene ethylene ethanol or methane which are basically hydrocarbons right now coming to the next substance what is the importance of the carbon gas or the fourth gas right so basically what happens to us during this particular process we are going to consider one chamber right in this chamber we are supposed to force the precursor gas now the chamber already comprises the substrate now whatever the precursor gas either it is the ethylene or acetylene or methane or methanol whatever it is it should deposit on the surface of the substrate once it gets deposited on the surface of the substrate then surface reaction takes place uh, between the substrate molecules and the precursor gas molecules resulting in the formation of uh, carbon nanotubes so everything happens only when the precursor gas molecules gets deposited on the surface of uh, the substrate surface that is accumulation of uh, the precursor gas molecule should happen that is adsorption of uh, precursor gas molecule should happen on the surface of uh, the substrate and this adsorption or accumulation is only possible with the help of uh, the carrier gas now whatever the precursor gas which has been uh, entered inside the chamber where the substrate is present doesn't have the enough energy to sit or accumulate or adsorb on the surface of uh, the substrate so we need the, the forcing gas we need the forcing gas which can force these precursor gas molecules on the surface of the substrate and these forcing gases are nothing but the carrier gas it is the facilitate the movement they are acting like a vehicle for the reach of this precursor gas molecules on the surface of uh, the substrate so this particular carrier gas or force gas is very significant in this particular method not only it deposit the precursor gas molecules on the surface of the substrate it also removes the by products which are usually the gases from the chamber out so this can be clearly understandable when i explain the functioning of this particular process the functioning involved in this particular process so this is about uh, the substances which are very much required for uh, carrying out the chemical vapor deposition for the preparation of carbon nanotubes and the role and the example of uh, these substances so coming to the chamber so this is the equipment this is the equipment which is required for carrying out the uh, the cvd chemical vapor deposition for the preparation of uh, carbon nanotubes now well, i will try to describe this chamber that is let us discuss uh, what are the substances what are the components by which the chamber is made up of it contains uh, one uh, cylinder containing the precursor gas another cylinder containing the carrier gas or uh, the forced gas what is the importance of the carrier gas or the forced gas already have explained right not only that this contains the split furnace split furnace by means of the split furnace around 700 to 800 degrees centigrade is being maintained in the chamber and there is one outlet from which uh, whatever the undesirable products that is uh, formed in the form of gases will be ejected out by means of the carrier gas so this is the description of the chamber by which uh, the chemical vapor deposition can be 
carried out uh, for the preparation of carbon nanotubes. Now let us see exactly what happens. Now by means of this particular cylinder, we have to inject the precursor gas. Either it could be diethylene, acetylene, methane or methanol which is the source of carbon for the preparation of carbon nanotubes. And this cylinder comprises the carrier gas or the forced gas which forces these precursor gas molecules inside the chamber and facilitate the deposition of the precursor gas molecules on the surface of the substrate. Right. Now the two gases are entering into the chamber. The two gases are entering into the chamber. When the two gases are, have entered inside the chamber, what happens is, with the help of uh, these uh, carrier gas or the forced gases, uh, gases, the precursor gas, that is carbon containing gases, either the acetylene, ethylene, ethanol or methane will accumulate on the surface of the substrate. This is the substrate. Accumulate our adsorption. That is, accumulation is what? Adsorption of uh, the substrate, adsorption of uh, precursor gas molecules takes place on the surface of the substrate. Now, as in this particular chamber, 700 to 800 degrees centigrade of temperature is being maintained. Within this range of temperature, the surface reaction takes place between the substrate and the precursor gas molecules which have been accumulated or absorbed on the surface of the substrate with the help of the carrier gas or uh, carrier gas or the forced gases. Now by which uh, the chemical reaction takes place between the substrate molecules and the precursor gas molecules. So due to this chemical reaction which are occurring on the surface of the substrate between the sub substrate molecules and the precursor gas molecules, carbon nanotubes are being formed. And these red colored one which have been depicted, the circles which have been depicted by the red color are nothing but uh, the carbon nanotubes which have been formed. And already I have discussed at the beginning that uh, in this particular method, uh, the byproducts, that is undesirable products along with the carbon nanotubes are also be going to be formed. So there is a need to eject these undesirable gases outside the chamber. Outside the chamber. And this job is done by the carrier gas or the forced gas. I already have this explained to you that uh, the job of uh, the carrier gas or the forced gas is two. There are two jobs associated with the carrier gas or the forced gases. The one is these are the gases which force the precursor gas molecules on, on the surface of the substrate by which the chemical reaction takes place between the substrate molecules and the precursor gas molecules by which carbon nanotubes are being prepared. Right. Not only that, during the preparation of carbon nanotubes, uh, some undesirable products uh, in the form of gases are also being formed. When they are formed, uh, these carrier gases or the forced gases will remove the, will remove the, remove these gases outside. That is byproduct outside. Byproduct outside. So this is a uh, overall process involved in the chamber. Now coming to the basic principle of CVD. So what is happening exactly students? So precursors are entering into the chamber. Now after entry of the precursors which are being depicted by the black circles, these are the precursors and these are the precursors which are in the gas phase. With the help of carrier gas or the forced gases what they are uh, what they are doing, uh, they are getting absorbed uh, or accumulated on the surface of uh, the substrate. On the surface of the substrate. Now when they are uh, getting absorbed or uh, accumulated on the surface of the substrate, uh, what is happening? Uh, the surface reactions are taking place between the substrate molecules and the precursor molecules which are basically comprised of uh, carbon atoms by which uh, some 
greenish layer is being absorbed greenish layer is being absorbed and that greenish layer is nothing but a growth of uh, carbon nanotubes due to the chemical reaction between the substrate molecules and the precursor gas molecules which basically comprise of uh, the carbon content now after some time at the temperature of 700 to 800 degrees centigrade what happens is the whole precursor gas molecules will be converted into carbon nanotubes uh, which are depicted by the green circles right initially there was light green that is that indicates that the growth has been started the growth of uh, carbon nanotubes has been started now after some time what is happening uh, all the precursor gas molecules are being converted to the carbon nanotubes and these red color circles represent that these are the by products or undesirable products which evolve out in the form of gases and the evolution of uh, these by products in the form of gases is facilitated by the carrier gas or the force gas so this is the basic principle of cvd i hope you understood this video students so if you really like this video please do comment on the video thank you students.